Thank you very much. So my name is Peter Kempeneers. I'm with the Joint Research Center, and I'm happy to be here um, in this um, in this session um, on on Europe. So that's uh, on, on uh, Phosphor G in Europe, and I'm talking about uh, free and open software um, in in the framework of uh, policy support in Europe. So in uh, and I will focus on a particular case study on, on water mon monitoring. I would like to uh, thank also my co-authors, uh, Roberto Ugolotti and uh, Luca De Felici, uh, who are also working with me on this. So this is the outline of, uh, of this talk. Uh, I'll first start with an overview of the Big Data Analytics platform, uh, which is a platform we are hosting um, in, in the GRC. Uh, I'll tell you something about the, the software landscape we're using and the data we're hosting in this, uh, in this BDAP, as we call it. And then uh, after this uh, more general overview, I will uh, have a, a deeper dive into the use case on surface water detection, uh, some words on the limitations of the algorithm we're uh, developing, and I'll draw some conclusions. So what is this, um, this BDAP, Big Data Analytics Platform? Um, our objective is to, to link data, data services, da data scientists, and, and thematic experts um, to generate policy-relevant uh, insight and foresight. So that's the aim, and, and how are we doing that? Um, in a nutshell, it's, it's an on-premise cloud platform um, where uh, we provide a shared ecosystem for data, data science, environments, and comp uh, computing power. Um, it's, it's built by GRC uh, researchers and also for uh, GRC researchers. So we, we do have some collaboration with, with um, scientists outside the GRC, but the main purpose is actually to build, it's not a public uh, cloud platform. So the main purpose is to serve uh, the GRC researchers to do their work, and their work is actually to provide policy relevant insight and foresight. So we do research not for blue sky uh, research, but we do research to, um, to serve um, the policy makers, uh, mostly in, in Brussels. Um, we uh, are doing that uh, by, first of all, hosting data, quite a lot of data. I'll, I'll go to in some more detail in, in one of the next slides. Uh, for the moment, we have uh, 28 uh, petabyte of storage. The um, BDAP also provides data science environments. We mostly rely on uh, Jupyter Notebooks for prototyping, um, but I'll tell you some more on, on some other uh, services as well. And uh, apart from the data storage, we also provide uh, data processing power. And that is both in uh, CPUs and GPUs. We have about, uh, we have 10 uh, GPU servers. And for CPUs, we have uh, both a, a cluster for high throughput computing and also high performance computing. For high throughput computing, which is what I'm using uh, mostly and also in, the, in this um, part for the, uh, for the data on, on uh, processing the data on, on water. Um, with the high throughput computing has uh, 1,500 cores uh, as disposal to, uh, to do the processing. Um, what type of software uh, are we using? Um, we are highly fostering uh, the de develop both the development and the usage of open source uh, software and libraries. Um, what you see here is, is not exhaustive, but it's, it gives a pretty much of an overview of, of, of the variety of software uh, we're using. Um, I'll, uh, there are some, as I say, we also develop. Uh, so in, in, in our team, um, I'm, I'm working on PyJO. This is um, a Python library for image processing, and under the hood, it's uh, developed in, in C++. Um, this has been uh, released as GPL uh, version 3. And then a colleague of mine, uh, Davide De Marchi, he's uh, working on the voice uh, library. And this is to facilitate the development of, of visualization dashboards um, under um, 
uh, Voila, so uh, using also these uh, Voila dashboards based on, on Jupyter Notebooks. Um, then, more particular to what we're using uh, for this water surface detection, so you see um, we're not using all uh, the, the, the software uh, I was showing before, so mostly this, uh, what we're using, um, it's, it's heavily based on Docker, the, the entire uh, system. Um, it either the, the web desktop for science, so you see here uh, Guacamole and Ubuntu, so this is to access our platform um, where you access it through your browser, so you have a, like a, a Linux desktop through the browser. Um, that is all uh, based on, on Docker containerization, but also the HTC and H, uh, HTC workflow engines um, that is uh, also open source that's based on HD Condor. That is also when, when we launch a, a job that is also always launched in a Docker uh, containerization. For the storage and file uh, sharing, we are using EOS. EOS is also open source and this has been developed. It's a distributed file system developed by uh, our colleagues in, in CERN. And um, so, as I said, also, also open source. Then for the data science uh, languages and IDs, um, mostly we're using Python, but many colleagues are also using R. But in our team, uh, when we are um, uh, supporting uh, our colleagues, um, our knowledge is mostly based on, on, on Python. And then um, we're using X-Array combined with uh, PyGeo and then Jupyter Notebooks and uh, Jupyter Lab uh, for, for prototyping and, and visualizing the, the results. And then for the machine learning, uh, we are using uh, scikit-learn. Uh, ah, and then also on the bottom, you see for the, uh, there's also fast API ng unicorn that is used actually to, to access the, the stack APIs uh, we have been developing for uh, getting to the data. So what type of, of data are we hosting? Um, quite some, some collections, more over 400 different collections uh, representing 20 million uh, metadata records. Uh, from this 20, 28 uh, petabytes I was mentioning, we have already used 20 petabytes uh, for these collections. Uh, so uh, these 20 petabytes represent only half of it for net data storage because uh, half of it is, using, uh, is used for redundancy. Um, over 1.7 billion files and uh, every day this, we are downloading about 10 terabytes of data. Most of it is uh, geospatial data and coming from the Copernicus uh, satellites like Sentinel-2 for example. Um, nevertheless, the, the data we host are quite heterogeneous uh, from coming from different data domain domains and um, from different data providers and also in, in different formats. So quite heterogeneous data we, we are hosting. And all, all this um, is based on, on, on user requests. So whenever uh, users in, in GRC are needing something, they come to us and we try to, to help them by downloading the data and, and hosting the data and creating APIs uh, where possible. Um, then we're going slowly more towards the, the, the use case. So uh, from all this data, as I mentioned, most of it is actually uh, geospatial data. And for instance, you see here what we're downloading uh, for Sentinel-2. So the whole of Europe is, is covered, uh, some parts in, in Africa. And also important to say is that we're not trying to replicate um, some of the public cloud, uh, what, what is already out there. So we try to uh, be as compatible as possible and also try to make it as easy as possible for our um, scientists to go and prototype on our system uh, to, like for example, CDSE. Whenever uh, users want to upscale, we, um, we point them to, to other platforms like, for example, CDC. Uh, so what they can do on our platform is either prototyping or, let's say, semi-upscaling um, whenever it's, it's, it's possible to, uh, for example, if it's pan-European or it's in Africa or some, some dedicated areas, we can also download some, some data for them. But if they really want to upscale to, uh, to uh, global coverage, uh, it's, it's not a place to be uh, the, the beat up. 
I briefly mentioned already, we have implemented a, a Stack REST API uh, to access all the geospatial data we are hosting, and in particular also this uh, Sentinel-2. And this um, has been proven quite useful um, to use because this means that we can, we can uh, make use of the, the nice uh, open source library like SpyStack and ODC Stack to create data cubes from the data that is, uh, that is hosted in, in our catalog. So then, um, as, I, as I mentioned, we are uh, serving uh, quite some use cases, over yeah, several hundred of, of, uh, uh, of users that are simultaneously um, collaborating on our platform. Um, and representing also quite some use cases. Not in all, um, in, not in all cases we are really collaborating in, in our team, so we, our team is, um, is, is rather small. Uh, in the in data analytics team I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working in, we are seven people. Um, so we cannot support all of them in, in, the same, uh, in the same way, but this is an example where we actually collaborate and also uh, do the, the, sign, the scientific work together with uh, some of the, of the, uh, the users elsewhere in, in the GRC. Um, so this use case is about surface water detection. Uh, it fits in the, the water framework directive and in, in the larger um, area, this also uh, fits into the, uh, the, the Green Deal um, of the Commission. And this is about access to, to clean water, but also to mitigate uh, the, the climate change uh, and, and effects like uh, floods and, uh, and droughts. Um, we do this um, using Earth observation data. Um, we try uh, to create a framework, we have tried to create a framework that is also um, capable of doing continuous monitoring in near real time and in also over longer time series, starting from the beginning of uh, Sentinel uh, acquisitions. It also um, is some kind of a continuation uh, of the global surface water. Uh, that's a product, uh, I believe, that was um, released in 2018 uh, by some other colleagues uh, in the GRC. You might, have, uh, you might be familiar with that, uh, with that product. Uh, and that was using Landsat data as input. Uh, in this case, it was a monthly aggregation, so there, there was a product every month, um, and uh, it was using the Landsat um, spatial resolution of uh, 30 meters, and it's a multi-image classification, so it's using multiple image within a month, but at the end, there's only one product every month released. Um, we changed that for the surface water detection, um, so going from Landsat to uh, Sentinel data, uh, also going from a monthly resolution to near real time uh, with an single scene classification rather than a multi-image classification, so we can really classify each single scene. Uh, of course, there are some, some drawbacks, uh, as I mentioned, uh, will mention later, on, on, on data availability. Um, and uh, this also, going from Landsat to, to Sentinel, gives also the opportunity to go uh, and increase the, the spatial resolution to, to 10 meters. So here, uh, the objective is, is not to classify all, in, in, at this stage, all, uh, all water in, in, in Europe, but we concentrated on, on a bit over 2,000 reservoirs in, in Europe. Um, as I mentioned, it's single uh, scene de uh, detection and also uh, pixel-based, um, starting from 2016 uh, to, to date. And um, it's purely uh, based on, on spectral information, so no... Um, uh, contextual information or, or time series, in this case just a single scene, spectral information on, on uh, pixel based. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, provide some, some uh, pixel uncertainty that is coming out from the machine learning. The, um, the classifier is based on random forests and we have a cascade of, of several uh, random forests, so it's a hierarchical uh, random forest uh, setup. First, remo remove the clouds because the, the, the cloud detection that is delivered uh, with the products, it's not sufficient for our purpose. Um, we also remove uh, cirrus and, and cloud shadows and also other 
shadows to some extent. I will uh, show you some, some, some more in the limitations. So it's um, partially successful, let's say. Um, we remove ice and, and snow, and then really at the end, what is um, remaining there, we, we do the classification on, on water and, and land. Um, we validated using the Dynamic World uh, product. Uh, we concentrated here on wh what is called the strict product. So there has been um, th like up to three um, uh, validators, and we only concentrated on uh, those areas where there was uh, an agreement between the the three validators. So let's say um, it's. You could say it's also the, the more easy example because in the more difficult, of course, there, there might be some uh, confusion also between the, uh, the validators. So we, we only uh, validated on the, on the strict product and there we obtained quite some promising results with an accuracy of 94%, uh, still some omissions, some omission errors of 4.5% and some commission errors of 26 uh, some limitations. Uh, we still struggle with some uh, some some hazy images, uh, also remaining uh, cirrus clouds that that are very difficult to uh, to detect. Uh, the same with ice and snow, and uh, and especially also topographic uh, shadows, as you see here below. We are uh, also doing some tests on uh, on on hill shading to try to to remove those. But uh, it's difficult also because the, the, the resolution uh, we have uh, available for the digital elevation model is, is not at the same resolution as our imagery. So it's not that, not that easy and we still um, have to, to solve some, some issues there. Um, some nice uh, side product that might interest you is that we also released, apart from um, uh, the code, we also uh, released not only the, the output product but also um, the, the, what we call S2 Gold. So it's a, a manually annotated uh, data set um, that is uh, publicly available. You can download it. Uh, you see the DOI here in, in the bottom. Those are uh, delineated polygons, so 66,000 polygons, where we have uh, concentrated on 15 classes. Uh, and for this task, we only concentrate on, on three, like invalid, water, and land. But if you have some uh, machine learning um, uh, you want to do some tests or you some some training on your machine learning, you're welcome to uh, uh, to use those 15 classes from this uh, S2 Gold dataset. Uh, then uh, some conclusions. Uh, we have tried to, to create a framework for real time, uh, near real time uh, water detection. So we have come close, but it's not finished yet. Uh, the um, the Focus here was uh, detect uh, water surfaces in, in Europe, but the framework, of course, can be also upscaled to, uh, to a global level. And um, so we released also this uh, S2 Gold data set um, as a side product. And with this, I think this is, then I conclude. Thank you very much. So are there any questions? Thank you. Uh, one question, are you doing some cross-check also with data from OpenStreetMap or other sources of land surfaces? Uh, not at this stage. Um, the thing is, the, uh, what we would need really as a validation is we need a time, uh, the timeline because we are classifying each individual scene and that is really restricted to one um, acquisition time and uh, so what we really need for validating is, is, is the observation at that time. I know that some of the, uh, the water like you can find in, in OpenStreetMap for example, that you can consider it as, as permanent water, but we are really interested in also the water that changes and, uh, and for that uh, we, we would need also some other validation uh, sets. Uh, have you considered using um, some inundation um, events that have been inundation events that have been mapped uh, as 
um, validation? Uh, that, that's a good point. Um, partially, yes, but I think there's still some, um, some work to be done there. So what, what I've tried is to, uh, there's some, like for example, in Lago Maggiore, very near to, uh, to our place, um, there is uh, some governmental data that is uh, showing the, not, not only the floods, but really the, uh, the, uh, the depth of, of Lago Maggiore in, in, in time. But it was a bit too detailed, I must say, for uh, I, the, success, uh, the, um, the results were not that successful. So I think maybe in, in, in floods where there's, uh, the areas are larger, we might have better, better results. So that's a good point.